Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Hey, welcome to RV Talk Radio. This is Rob. Welcome to episode 79. Yep, and uh, great day. Hey, we got a lot of things to talk about. I need to find out, are you qualified? Can you even call yourself an RVer? Really? Come on. So let's talk about that today. So I was doing a little bit of uh, research on the internet and I thought, I'm going to look up the definition of recreational vehicle. And it pretty much says a recreational vehicle definition is a van or utility vehicle used for recreational purpose as camping and often equipped with living facilities. So that's that's one. <laughs> and uh, so basically it, it, it's saying that it's used for camping and travel. And I read a couple other definitions and that's what I'm reading. So, is a full-time RVer really an RVer? Are they actually RVing? So, let's look at some of the different um, scenarios. But before I go on, I'm going to read one more definition. A large motor vehicle, usually uh, with facilities for sleeping and eating, used for recreational activities such as camping. So, when you watch a lot of these channels and and blogs and things like that they're uh telling you you come out here and be an rv or or come an rv uh, or or rving and and so now i have to start questioning is like well if you're living in one of these things are you really an rver um you know you how do you define living if you're actually living in a RV or recreational vehicle for your, let's put it this way, if you took your RV away, you'd be homeless. Are you really an RVer or are you misusing uh, the term as RVer? And I guess maybe you just have to add on full-time RVing, but let's talk about some of the other scenarios that I've seen over the years and and let's ask ourselves, uh, are they actually an RVer? So I'm going to start with like uh, these folks I met last summer that are both uh, using the RV and they don't even consider themselves RVers. And they, and they were kind of surprised when I said, well, ask questions about RVing and they kind of looked at me funny. And I know you find, you know, you can't believe that sometimes, but they're, they're uh, traveling nurses and they just looked at me like, oh, I guess we are. RVers because we are in an RV but they're using their RV as a home that is mobile and they have to move it uh, based on their work and so it made really good sense to have a mobile home not an RV they kind of looked at it as a mobile home um, even though it was defined as an RV as a place to live because when you're a traveling nurse, you may only be working for a few months or whatever, and it's really hard to get an apartment for a shorter period of time. And if you do, you pay more, and it's just not cost effective. Um, and so to have a really good lifestyle of a, of a place that's mobile and flexible, uh, an RV make complete sense to them. But they actually <laughs> don't consider themselves RVers. So... Are they what we all call an RVer or not? So uh, I, I did want to take the time to say that I had a wonderful opportunity to meet with one of our listeners, um, Paul Levin, I think is how you say his last name, uh, stopped by. Uh, he was passing through on his way to Quartzside, and uh, he's used, he got a brand new Class C. It was really nice, a little 25-foot Thor. And we put a picture of it on our uh, Facebook. And so anyway, he's traveling for two weeks in his new RV. 
and it's, and it's doing what pretty much everybody kind of pictures is you get in your RV, you load it with your things, you travel, go to different places or follow activities, but she's uh, uh, trying to catch up with the escapees. And uh, um, in two weeks after he's done, he's going to go back home again. Now, that sounds like the definition of what I'm reading here as an RVer, a recreational vehicle. So, uh, are we getting kind of uh, uh, over the top when we're starting to say, well, we're living out here and sell all your stuff and all that and become an RVer? Well, uh, maybe you're okay saying that if you're traveling or doing activities, go from point to point. But if you're just living in an RV, can you actually call yourself an RVer? Yeah, anyway, let's let's talk about a couple other scenarios. So you uh, live in Oregon, let's say, and uh, you and your partner, the kids are gone, or maybe they're not. And one of you was, uh, and, and this is sad, but let's say one of you uh, finds out you have cancer, and one of the best treatment centers is here in F uh, Phoenix. So the best choice is, is let's take the RV down to. Phoenix, and for while you're getting treatment, we'll take the RV near uh, the facilities where you're getting your treatment, and uh, for the next month or so, and as you're getting your treatment, when we're all done, we'll get in our RV and go back home. So, are those RVers, or are they just using a RV as a tool to accomplish something that isn't a recreational uh, uh, activity, but I guess you could call it an event? but they're actually doing a necessity. Uh, so do they have the right to call themselves an RVer? I'm just, just asking. <laughs> and um, does the word, are we, I, I guess it's really come down to is, are we not using the word RVer or RVing correctly? Is there a, a, a better definition of, say, people that use an RV permanently as a home? as opposed to someone that uses it as a part-time thing or a snowbirding uh, or, or using it for a different purpose or maybe they're using it for contract work maybe uh should we be a little careful about how we're wording the word rving and so yeah i mean uh to me it's not that big a deal but other people can be more acute about that kind of thing so i'm living in our uh, fifth wheel full time and sure he's working and I'm retired and I work from the RV am I actually an RVer or or should I just call myself a full time RVer but I'm not traveling I'm not doing an activity or event uh, we're just living in our RV and um, maybe because I move from another space to another three months from now or something would that qualify me as traveling uh, is there a better name like am I actually in a mobile home even though it's an, defined as an RV a recreational vehicle am I really just a mobile home tr uh, person uh, I don't know I, I never really thought about it until I started reading this stuff and so uh, let's talk about another scenario I've met plenty of folks that have been in their RVs and they're like they're traveling with like five or six dogs and they're uh, coming to another state to do a dog show or there's other people that are um, have products and they like to go to different states and sell their products at craft fairs and stuff uh, so I guess they're traveling and I guess they're going to events so that would be a legal def definition of a RVer um, and then um, then they're going back to their homes so there, uh, what I didn't see in the definition is the word part-time or full-time. And maybe what we need to start pushing for is a definition of an RV is for activities and events, part-time or full-time use in travel. Uh, I, I, I don't know. And it's like, uh, once again, I, I'm not that particular about definitions and things like that, but other folks are and then there's also the legalities of insurance and things like that is uh are, you know are you putting your homeowner's insurance on a recreational vehicle 
and you do and we all know that there's issues with that so maybe we have to be a little more careful about what we're saying is hey come out here and be an RVer well if you you know just doing extended RVing and part-time and snowbirding and stuff uh, doing events things like that sounds like you're a perfect RVer but if you're a full-time living in your RV and that's your home and your residence is actually considered another state or a particular state, are you actually an RVer? I think you're more of a mobile home person. But if you're an RVer full-time and you're traveling all the time from point to point to point, that's pretty close to being what this definition is saying is an RV. But if you're holding up in one place, and it's your home, and I know there's people that are retired and are just living in their RV, and that's it. Uh, they do move their RV once in a while out of necessity. Are they actually an RVer? Hmm. I don't know. I, I'd be curious to hear everybody's definition on that. The other thing I've read is is an RV legally is uh, registered as a vehicle. Uh, and so has follows the laws of being a uh, a vehicle uh, and subject to the laws of automotive industry like uh, licensing and things like that. So none of that covers anything about being a home or home on wheels. Um, legally, it's a vehicle or autom automotive product. So anyway, that's just something to think about is home sweet home is your car <laughs> it's an automobile it's just bigger and has amenities uh, uh much like a house uh, but really uh it's a home so full timing um i think is really closer to saying mobile home and so anyway i i just thought i'd bring that up and i'd love to hear the discussion about it i'm not taking one side or the other uh, I'm just saying that I, now I consider myself an RVer, and I and we were RVing, going from point to point to point, and then we've settled down and stopped, and we're here in our RV, and so uh, it could go on for a while. And so, am I really an RVer? So, I guess I could be offended by that a little bit, but I don't. I it's okay because I'm really not doing an activity. Uh, unless activity would be working from my RV, Sherry goes to work from here, so she's doing an activity, but that's more of a necessity. Uh, and we're not actually here for a particular event, and uh, we are in a registered vehicle. So I, I don't know if I actually have the right to call myself an RVer or I'm RVing at the time, but I am living in an RV as a full-time person. Uh, so anyway, yeah, um, once again, I'd just like to hear comments and ideas of, of definitions or just like leave it be is not important. <laughs> so I agree. Uh, per, uh, frankly, I don't, I don't think it's that big a deal, but uh, it could have some legalities when it comes to like insurance and things like that. So um, yeah, so yeah, let's hear, let's hear what you have to say about that, guys. Let's move on to another subject. As I mentioned earlier, I had a chance to meet with Paul Levin. Uh, I believe that said his last name right. And it was a good example of what we just love to meet people that listen to our show. And uh, you know, we ask them the things that they uh, like uh, like or dislike about the show. And, and uh, their overall, I mean, they see it from a whole different uh, aspect. So I wanted to remind people that you know, this is a podcast which comes out once a week. And so a lot of folks still listen to us uh, through the video version. But uh, if you get the opportunity on your cell phone, go to your, you know, where you can download free apps. And I use Podcast Addict. That's And there's some other ones out there, and I don't remember all the names. But find the one that you like the best. They're free. And what they do is they'll put all your podcasts that you like to listen to into a, a, a listening library. And they'll update themselves automatically as new episodes come out. So it was really nice because I would consider Paul a real podcast listener. And he has 
He doesn't just listen to ours. There's other shows out there like uh, um, uh, Live in the RV Dream, and then there's some other RV uh, industry um, podcasts and some other uh, shows that do like a show once a month uh, that pertain to RVing. And then there's other shows out there that are beyond just RVing. There's so many different subjects. Maybe uh, you're into politics, or maybe you like to um, have good discussions about uh, social issues and stuff like that. There's a podcast about everything. Maybe you're into basket weaving. There's probably a podcast about that. So anyway, if you get the opportunity, you should uh, try it out, and you may enter into the world of podcasting and find it even um, funner than you think. It can be a great way to kick back, relax. Uh, you know, it might be at home and maybe you just want to take a hot bath, a bubble bath and sit back and listen to your favorite podcast or around the fire or going for walks. Uh, uh, all the different things that you, where you like to sit down and chill out. Maybe you and your uh, uh, wife like to just sit down outside in the lounge chairs, turn on the podcast where you both can hear it. And for an hour, enjoy your favorite subject and then maybe have a good discussion of what you just heard. So anyway, if you get the opportunity, get yourself a, a free application to actually, um, so like for example, well, let me back up a little bit. So when you get the software, you just go in and type in, uh, if you don't know the shows you want, you just type in uh, RV and then do a search and see what shows up. Our show would probably show up. Um, or you, for us, you can just type in RV Talk Radio and hit search and you'll, it'll say, here it is, and you subscribe to it and then... It just makes it easier that whenever you're ready to go listen to a show, you just get your cell phone, put your earphones on if you like, hit play uh, latest episode, or uh, and there it goes. And what's really cool about that is you don't have to listen to the whole episode that whole hour. Maybe you have 10 minutes and say, okay, it's lunchtime at work. Uh, I'm going to listen to uh, you know, a half hour of the show uh, in my car at lunchtime and then, or right at your desk. And then you pick up where you left off whenever you're available. Maybe you're driving home and you want to finish the rest of the show. And it's really nice. So you got to check it out. The other thing that was really nice is Paul took the time to contact us. And the funny thing about uh, him was uh, he says, yeah, I'm going to be at your RV park that you're at. And I'm going to be in space 101. And I just had to laugh. I wrote back to him. I go, you know what? You have no other choice. You're going to meet us whether you like it or not. We happen to be in 102. <laughs> so it was like, sweet. So it was really nice to meet Paul. And I appreciate it. Had a nice evening. We uh, got to try some uh, a Riesling wine that came from Colorado. Uh, it was really good. We kind of like sweeter wines like that. And it was really neat to just get his definition of things that he's been hearing and then all the different shows he watches. And we had kind of like the same kind of comments and, and, and uh, definitions of certain shows we do or don't like anymore and some that we did watch for a while and don't anymore and some new ones we've added. And uh, it was uh, really, uh, we're definitely in the same playing field and it was so enjoyable. And uh, uh so, yeah, uh, I want to personally thank Paul for stopping by and visiting us. And uh, we gave him a few stickers to take along with him and one of our little flashlights. And uh, uh, anytime we meet one of our listeners, we always like to send you home with a, a little goodie. So, anyway, once again, Paul, uh, have safe travels. Pleasure to meet you. I hope we uh, cross paths again. And, uh, yeah, thanks for sharing your RV with us, too. It was really nice because... Uh, uh, someday, I think Sherry and I would like to get a little smaller RV um, when we kind of have settled down. And uh, the kind of rig he had was ideal for that. So, yeah, that was wonderful. And once again, if you get a chance to contact us and talk with us, we'd love to hear from you. Just go to RV Talk Radio, go to the contact page and shoot us a note there. Go to our Facebook, you can talk to us. Or you can just send me an email directly if you can remember this. It's Rob, R-O-B, at rvtalkradio.com and shoot me a note. And it's all private. And uh, on the videos, you can always uh, add your comments and observations in the comment area. We appreciate that you stay professional. And uh, uh, we bring up subjects for discussion, not to, not to create hate. Uh, we're just here because uh, 
Um, some of the stuff really has some great discussions and some great comments from everybody and things that we may not even considered. So yeah, uh, nice to hear from you guys. So thanks, Paul. And let's move on. One of the discussions that came up when we uh, uh, met with uh, Paul the uh, other day is uh, we were talking about boondocking and, and uh, solar panels and a little bit thing stuff like that and uh extended warranties and and little you know general conversation things that are all important and uh, i brought up something to him that actually he once we talked about it, he says you know you're you're absolutely right rob it's a great resource and uh so i want to and and of course some of you guys knew that we uh, got into sailing and we eventually bought a power boat but some of these channels that are say sailing cruisers and and i'm sure a lot of you folks know like uh, gone with the winds uh, they're in a, a sailboat now um now our favorite sherry and i our favorite show to watch and they do a show weekly and they and they've been doing this for six years and i highly recommend this channel for the entertainment the photography and uh, uh they do talk about things that actually refer very well the people that boondock and want to be off the grid a little bit and it's called sv as uh for sailing vessel sv delos and uh, i'm sure you've heard me say that before as d-e-l-o-s sv delos and once you subscribe to them i would highly recommend that you go way back and start their episodes from the beginning and uh and we had to laugh because um uh, Paul was around our age group too, so we're in our 50s. And yes, this is a younger generation of uh, travelers, and they're in a 51 foot uh, sailboat and traveling around the world. And uh, they have other cruisers come on board with them and work on the boat, and they contribute and help pay for the expenses. But if you want to talk about having to utilize power, uh, where it comes to storing power with batteries, uh, solar panels, uh, and they often have to make their own water with water makers, um, and then keeping that equipment running and the problems they have, especially when you're cruising from one uh, country to another and getting parts and things break. I'm telling you that one of the best shows to watch are some of these cruising sail channels. And I personally think the best one is SV Delos. And uh, Gone with the Winds, they uh, often uh, will refer to some of the uh, uh, um, uh, boondocking subjects that we talk about often about uh, storing power, creating power, um, and, and and saving food. Like the problem with like sailing is one is sometimes you go to places and the food isn't that good. Two is you for long periods of time to store food on your boat. Uh, has its issues too. Like you'll notice with uh, cruisers, they'll always take the labels off of cans and stuff like that because some critters actually, li uh, paper is uh, something they'll eat and actually create, you know, uh, you'll have a lot of bugs in your in your sailboat just based off of that. And cardboard is bad too. And things that they deal with, it, not necessarily as big a problem with an RV. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of comparisons there. So if you're really into boondocking and you really want to be self-sufficient and, and create your own power and store your own power and regulate your own power and, um, and, and in some cases, if you really want to make your own water and you, know, you don't want to take it straight out of the streams and stuff because uh, you can get really sick. Um, there's water makers that you can get very expensive, but <laughs> yeah, it's there. So if you really want to learn how to be a good boondocker and learn how to be off the grid, watch some of these sail cruising shows. I highly recommend them. You'll learn a lot from these guys. But anyway, to go back to SV Delos, young, uh, young, uh, they're not quite millennials, they're a little older than that. Um, uh, well educated. Uh, one, uh, I think Brian, who's the captain of uh, SV Delos, is a, pr a computer programmer. Um, just something he wanted to do. Got involved doing it. Started doing it, and it just grew. And uh, and his brothers with him, and his uh, girlfriend uh, Karen, I think is her name. And they have folks 
from different countries that have joined them for a few months or even a few years and eventually have moved on and uh, they get different crew members and uh they're all young you know all young at heart young people and um uh, but um and you know and sometimes their little antics that they do will be young at heart as opposed to us old farts <laughs> and uh but uh uh, all you have to do is try to remember what you're like when you're in your 20s and 30s and just smile and enjoy the show. And uh, anyway, but yeah, great education, great show. You get a chance to watch them. Uh, I don't think they have a podcast, but uh, they have been interviewed on some podcast shows. And so, uh, yeah, in fact, maybe someday I'll try to interview them. But uh, yeah, uh, you get a chance. Check them out. SV Delos. So uh, keeping our conversations <laughs> where they're kind of interesting, I was watching on Facebook uh, some folks talking about the cost of RV parks. And it's kind of funny, it was a bias kind of thing, uh, that they would suggest like somebody pulls in with a quarter million dollar motorhome or, or better, um, uh, complaining about paying $40 a, a night for an RV park. And it's like, well, they probably don't care, or why should they care? They're driving a quarter million dollar machine. Um, and it's like, well, wait a minute. So, <laughs> got to think about this. Let's put this in the perspective of homes. Uh, if you, which is not uncommon, a quarter million dollar home, two hundred fifty thousand dollar house, is not unusual. And let's talk about cable bills <laughs> or dish bills we, we all hate those because you'll sign up you know as well i do we sign up for those things they keep going up in price and they keep adding things on pretty soon your 79.95 is like 130 dollars a month now and i don't care how much you make that ticks anybody off so i think that whether you're driving a uh, half million dollar machine or you just got a used rv that you're barely scraping by. You all, we all have the right of like the things that support us in our being is um, we have the right to try, you know, um, be upset or be concerned about what our daily costs are. And it doesn't matter how much money you make, everybody likes to save money and nobody likes to feel like they're being ripped off. And so I think uh, we should level the playing field a little bit when it comes to that kind of subject that uh, if you're upset about $40 a day rates, um, that's uh, understandable. And um, if you, for example, if you had a house that's like $1,500 a month, if you were to rent it out of that thing, it will come out to about $50 a day uh, that you'd have to get just to cover the mortgage. And so, uh, uh, really, forty dollars a day, if you're in a, a decent RV park that really had nice facility, you know, it's nice facilities and clean and whole works. Uh, I guess you could say that's kind of a fair price uh, if you think about it. If you compared it to uh, like a house or a mortgage. Once again, I love to hear your comments on this. I'm not taking one side or the other. I certainly can see why someone that makes a lot of money or has a very expensive machine can be concerned about daily costs of anything, just like you would uh, or, or us or someone else that's not making as much and maybe using an RV and that's worth just a fraction of what that machine is. Uh, I think it's good that we all question what our costs are on food, on facilities, on utilities, things like that. Uh, I, I I think a lot of times we get so critical about worrying about what class of environment people live in, uh, well-to-do doctors and lawyers as opposed to a person that's been a welder all of his life and made a good living but uh, you know has to get a more uh, common sense cost of, of an RV to, uh, to travel in as opposed to someone rolling in with these 44 foot <laughs> mega machines and they're awesome there's no doubt but uh, uh, they have you know the same concerns we do so yeah uh, try next time when you're having any discussions not to go not to go to that point of well, you've got a quarter dollar million dollar why you know machine why would you care if you're paying forty dollars a night for an r v space um uh you don't have the right to 
be upset about it. And it's like, well, she, yeah, he does, or she, or whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah. So open your mind a little bit. We're on the we're all on the same team on uh, on subjects like that. Trying to get our costs, uh, get value for our dollar, is important to everybody. Well, as I go reading again in the old Facebook and looking at discussions, I, I come across another one about um, there was a map shown of all the unfriendly places for free overnight parking for RVs. And it's quite immense. It's big. And one of the first comments I read in there is, is because RV parks and resorts have lobbied uh, cities uh, to create ordinances to stop uh, free RV um, parking. And, of course, the, one of the writers say, well, uh, uh, that also keeps the RV parks from improving their facilities and uh, uh, attracting us to come want to come to their RV parks because of their amenities. Uh, instead of uh, going out and trying to eliminate free parking around the areas, uh, forcing them to come to your RV park or, or a resort, even if it's run down and, and not a very nice park. And so I, I don't know, I, I have, to, um, so the first thing I'm going to try to ask you to do as a listener is like, all right, let's pretend you're an RV, you just bought an RV park. You just bought one. It's yours. And it could be semi okay RV park. Maybe it could use a few improvements, more uh, nicer plants. The pools, not that pretty looking, and some of the f uh, building uh, could use a little painting and things like that. But, you know, also there's money involved to do that, of course. And so, uh, um, so you do what you can one step at a time. And one year you'll focus on built, you know, painting and fixing up all the, you know, all the buildings that look good and maybe making. Um, probably one of your first things was making sure the bathhouse, shower houses, things like that were in good shape and working order, uh, hot water heaters and stuff like that. Because that's really a big impression right right off the bat is how nice are the uh, uh, restroom facilities. And then part two is probably um, making sure your laundry mats halfway, your machines are decent and things are clean and uh, it's uh, a workable, uh, you have good working machines and things like that. And then, you know, making sure your office's uh, first impressions is, are, are important, too, and when people walk right into your office. So, of course, everything we're talking about costs money. And so uh, uh, you also want to make, uh, make it easy for people to register to your RV park. So you'll probably sign up for an automatic uh, uh, registration service, which you actually sign up for something outside that ties into your website. And a, uh, a registration comes in, and uh, they collect the money, and it comes back, and you get notification as an RV owner that you're you've got a new reservation, and then you tie it into your software. <clears throat> so there's a cost to that. That's not free either. So that's costing the RV parks more. So uh, um, so if you're really an avid RV park owner, are you going to Take the time to try to start talking to your city uh, representatives that are on the council, let's say, and things like that. To say, hey, can you help push more ordinances out there to uh, not allow people to park freely on the sides of roads in certain areas? Um, because it, it, just, it isn't really a right thing to do because they're actually RVs and they're camping. And, and so... Uh, can we get an ordinance to the city saying uh, all these different places are not free to stay at? And and, uh, and that'll help drive traffic to my RV park or resort. And so do all of us really think that all RV parks think that way? Uh, of course, there's the business. I mean, uh, and there is business. And you do have to advertise and you do have to market. And uh, if you, um, you know, if you had a restaurant and a guy had a hot dog, mobile hot dog stand in front of your restaurant, do you try to get that guy to move and not interfere with your, maybe you sell hot dogs and, and, and hamburgers and stuff in your little restaurant or drive-in 
would you feel upset if a guy with a little hot dog stand parked right in front of your place and started doing business and maybe keep people from coming in and buying, you know, uh, maybe one or two customers didn't come into your place because of that. Is that a fair business practice? Hmm. And uh, so I could see where you can like, grr, but if you put yourself in their shoes, you could kind of see where they may be coming from. And if you kind of put other scenarios like that, um, I guess you, I wouldn't blame uh, RV parks and resorts for trying to eliminate free camping in the city uh, limits, let's say, or something like that, or or county. Um, but at the same time, uh, do we we need to hold those RV parks and uh, and resorts accountable for? having good facilities uh, that we think are adequate to the price that they're charging us. Now, if I was going to an older park and they were only charging $25 a night to stay there as opposed to a four or five star resort that charges me 40 or 50, that's, I think, is fair um, that they're charging accordingly. But if I'm forced to go to a rundown RV park that's charging me 40, 50 bucks, <laughs> and it's a dump uh, or maybe there's a lot of rundown RVs in it and people living full time in there they have really bad uh, uh, neighbors in there questionable people I'd be a little upset too so um, where do you reverse that and say okay counties or, or cities how do you can you hold your RV parks and resorts accountable to making sure that their facilities are uh good enough based off of what they're charging for their uh, cost to be there uh, hold them responsible of safety and and having clean you know good facilities is there health inspections or is it facilities inspections that come in and hold them accountable so uh yeah it's a two-way street i'd love to hear your comments on that too i saw a little bit of that discussion in one of the facebook uh, of course, the first guy attacks the RV park saying, well, you know, they're just forcing us to use their RV parks. Um, well, as a business, I could see them why they would try to do that. So, uh, you know, uh, I know you're not, a, you may not own a business or ever owned a business ever, but if you were a business owner, would you be guilty of that? Would you have maybe look into trying to reduce competition? I think you would. Uh, is it ethical? Eh, questionable. A little gray. But as a business owner, uh, talking to another business owner, the other one business owner would say, I don't blame you. <laughs> so I don't know. It's, it's all fair and love and war. But also uh, just the other side is us trying to hold these RV parks and, re uh, and resorts accountable for having good facilities. And our power as people is that maybe have organizations and, and uh, of course, we have social network and stuff like that to do things in a professional way to hold these parks accountable. So instead of complaining and, and making, uh, uh, making accusations, maybe you ought to get involved in a community forum or some kind of good, good reputable kind of uh, organization that could try to hold these RV parks accountable for the quality of their services. So yeah, it's a good a good uh, conversation. I'd love to hear about that too. And before I sh uh, move to another subject, I also wanted to remind everybody that we're sponsored by uh, a new part of our business called um, Good Music Radio, which is an internet radio station. It's 24-7, very little talk, very little commercials. However, if you like to... Um, create a, I mean, it does have commercials, but it's really light, but, uh, uh, it's a startup, um, radio station. And if you're interested in, uh, you have a product or service that you'd like to put on it and doesn't have to be RV related. It's, this is a regular greatest hits music past and present. And anyway, I urge you to give it a try and check it out. Good, goodmusicradio.com. And just like a podcast, you can go to goodmusicradio.com. There's a little uh, link there that says download a mobile app. And you get a free app, absolutely free. There's no cost whatsoever to uh, listening to goodmusicradio.com. 
And uh, what's really cool is we pull music that was good from all the way from the 40s all the way to present. It's got pop. It's got classic rock. It's got easy listening and country, uh, nothing but hits. And it's it's interesting. It's well blended. Um, and um, I, I, especially if you're a baby boomer, you'll really go back. And I'm hoping... We're all hoping that when you listen to it, well, occasionally a song will come on going, man, I haven't heard that forever, and that's a great song. So anyway, that's what um, Good Music Radio is all about. So you get a chance, goodmusicradio.com. Check it out. It's 24-7. You can listen to the music anywhere you go as long as you can get internet on your cell phone. So uh, it's great, and uh, uh, you can listen to it uh, in different states, uh, uh, you can listen to it in other countries. It's just really neat to have a radio. If you like the radio station, it's always available to you, no matter where you go. So check it out, goodmusicradio.com. I had the laugh just the other day. I watched a video from uh, rvtravel.com. And uh, I don't know the guy's name, but I've seen him before. And he was talking about how he's living full-time in his RV. I think he's got like a 32-foot motorhome. And opened up his um, um, closet to show his clothing and showed how little clothing that they had hung up. And he does have a partner, his wife. And uh, so he says, well, in their house, they had stuffed closets and, and clothes to you know, spare. And when they went full-timing, got it down to a very manageable uh, amount of clothing. And when he opened it up, it's like, uh, I can tell you one thing, he had a lot less clothing than me and Sherry have. Uh, our closet's pretty stuffed. In fact, I probably got shirts or stuff in there I don't even know I have with us. And so the, the funny thing is, it goes, you know what the secret is? Is uh, because uh, we travel, I don't necessarily see the same person uh every day. So how do they know that I'm wearing the same shirt I wore yesterday? And he goes, and so he talked about wearing the same shirt three or four days in a row. And you laugh, you go, ah, and with guys, I mean, we can kind of get away with it because we, if you wear a t-shirt and change out your t-shirt underneath, um, that's, I can, you know, that makes sense. And the other thing is, if it was really hot weather, like here in Phoenix, and uh, it's like a 90 or 100, you're going to be sweating and stuff like that. You can't get away with wearing the same shirt. When, you know, uh, and, and you're still doing laundry once a week. He said eh, that stuff, but I had to laugh about that. So I, I'm going to add on to that is I agree with him is, is because, you know, if you're not doing your own laundry, it, it's, you want to be kind of cost effective too, and also keep the number of pieces of clothing down to a reasonable amount. So what I'll do is actually um, I'll have Sherry will do laundry, and it's like I'll wear one of my favorite shirts, and then I actually kind of I don't put them away. I kind of put them aside, and I'll take one shirt and, uh, that I like wearing Monday, and then I'll if I knew I didn't mess it up and it was a casual day and. I <laughs> didn't eat spaghetti that day. I'll leave it out, and then I'll grab a new shirt on Tuesday. So until I get, I'll get a like a pile of like five or six shirts on the dresser, which yeah, it looks messy. I know, but and I kind of uh, if I know that it was a day where it was like I was just sitting doing a, a podcast all day, and I didn't mess the shirt up, and I didn't do any uh, thing that caused me to perspire or anything. Then I, I and of course he said I never well, I'll give it the old sniff test so that's a guy thing you know, but <laughs> girls can do it I don't care anyway so uh, I, that's what I'll do is actually rotate through five or six different shirts that I wear unless that particular day I was working on a bicycle and I got grease on it or something it's like all right that one goes right into the laundry, um, but yeah I'll rotate my shirts. Um, um, to try to keep the laundry down to a minimal and uh, and reasonable. And yes, it's true. I don't see the same people over and over. If I was going to work every day, couldn't get away with that. No way. But if you're living in an RV park full-time or full-time RVer, uh, and especially if you're driving and going from another place to another, you could say, 
you could wear the same shirt three days in a row and hardly anybody know the difference. So I thought it was kind of an interesting video. Uh, it was kind of brave that he kind of talked about that because some folks would just freak out. Like, what do you mean? That's, that's like saying skipping a day of brushing your teeth, I guess. <laughs> no, I don't do that. Um, but anyway, oh, and the other thing I was going to tell you about, and I told you we bought one at Costco, is we've finally tried out one of these Sonic uh, toothbrushes. And I've always been traditional, you know, I'm old school, the old fashioned regular toothbrushes. I got to admit that I, I really like those. Those are, um, uh, you, I feel like you, um, certain areas in your, uh, when you're brushing your teeth, you feel like you, you're getting a little bit more attention and the heart and a better uh, scrubbing uh, your upper gums and things like that. So I got to tell you that Sonic uh, toothbrush if you haven't had a chance to try one you know you get them at costco and a lot of times they'll have really good deals on them uh try them out i think kaylee and josh they just bought one too and i saw them when they went down a costco run and uh yeah i really like our sonic uh toothbrush um the other thing i wanted to talk about is we have a mini uh gurin gurin g-u-r-i-n uh dehumidifier and it's a it's a mini one it's probably no more than eight inches tall maybe i'm looking at it right now maybe about seven inches wide and we've had that since last year and you watch some of our videos we actually uh, uh talked about that particular uh, dehumidifier and uh it broke uh it just stopped working we turned it off for a little bit and i uh, went to turn it sure you went to turn it back on the light came on but nothing was happening and we beat on it and the whole thing and uh, so the thing I want, I'm so impressed, we really like it. It really works well. And we actually keep it up on our dresser up in the upper sec section of our uh, fifth wheel because it's also close to the bathrooms where we take showers and stuff. And even though we have a fan and stuff like that, you know, you get moisture. And we're in Phoenix, you wouldn't think there'd be much moisture. But uh, it's amazing how much water that thing accumulates. And so anyway, it quit working. So Sherry got on the internet, and we bought it from Amazon. And she went to the manufacturing. There was a site on a page on there where you could uh, uh, had a warranty. And if you have this thing less than a year, which we'd had it like eleven months, and we could prove that we when we bought it, which was really easy because when you go to Amazon, you can go to your past orders, and you can see your invoice number and and when it was shipped. Um, the verify the purchase and when you when it actually shipped and you got it, you put that information on this web page that they have, and they will replace it for free. And there is no games, no gimmicks. Just put the facts down on why it, uh, why you uh, why it stopped working, and within four days, five days, we had a brand new one replaced it, no questions asked. Wow, what, wow good service so it was a gerwin i'm gonna put a link in the description of uh of that particular product to amazon if you're interested in getting one uh they're not that expensive they work really well they're pretty quiet uh and they're not too cumbersome they don't take up a lot of room and uh it's been a really good product and and then when it actually died on us uh, the manufacturer stood behind the product and replaced it immediately. That was awesome. So thumbs up on that Gerwin, man. So look in our description. If you're interested in uh, seeing what it looks like and you'd like to get one, uh, please uh, feel free to use the link that we provide down in the description. So check it out. The Gerwin Dehumidifier. Get that moisture out of the air. That's uh, It'll keep reduce the mold and uh, protect your RV. So speaking of products, I also want to talk about another thing that Sherry and I have that's worked out really well over a long periods of time. And that's our little vacuum, a hand, a not, well, it's a mini vacuum made by Eureka. And if some of you guys probably have seen them before, they're yellow. They're a mid-sized little vacuum. They're not that big. And uh, they're good for rugs and for uh, regular flooring. And so uh, the reason I want to bring that up is is we keep that in here. We have a built-in vacuum system that is in the RV. And, um, you know, we're having a cat and dog, so we're, you know, you always want to try to vacuum when you can because of the, the fur. And so uh, I'll, I actually uh, 
uh, vacuumed the other day um, and did the whole RV. And then Sherry, like a day later, came in behind me with the Eureka. Uh, and I'll, I'll put another, I think you can probably get this, or Eureka through uh, Amazon. I'll try to find it. And uh, it's not very expensive, by the way. And it's got a little beating head in it that spins and stuff. And when, and uh, easy to clean out uh, canister. And you would not believe how much fur and dirt she picked up after I vacuumed with our regular vacuum that was provided in our Montana. I mean, significant. I mean, it's like I had to like Sherry. I really did vacuum. She goes, she goes. I know, but this is just a really good vacuum, and uh, it's so it's so small enough to easily store in an RV. And it works really well on carpets that really bring up the dirt. It, um, and uh, it put our built-in vacuum to shame. Um, it, and she's done that before. It isn't the first time that she's come in and said, wow, you don't believe what this little vacuum does. So what a great investment. So two things I'm going to bring up in the descriptions. One is the Gerwin dehumidifier. And two, the um, uh, um it's not miniature, but it's smaller than a regular vacuum. Eureka vacuum. It's electric, and uh, it's a, it plugs in like a regular vacuum. It doesn't have battery chargers or anything, but it just really works good, and it's really good for an RV. And we've had it for more than just this RV. We've had it for quite a while, and uh, and it's still working really good. So. Two products we've been very impressed with, and I want to pass those along. So, yeah, go down in the description, check them out. And since I'm on a roll here with products, I want to—I I thought of one more product that we have that's held up well and has been great for RVing is our Charbroil um, Mini uh, um, Barbecue. And I did a video on it last a year and a half ago up in Washington. And uh, went through the procedure of how to get it ready for your first use and stuff. And uh, I got to tell you, that thing's built like a Sherman tank. It's, you don't have to assemble it. That's the one thing I really like about it. And they're not cheap. They're over $100. Uh, and it's got one of those new plates on it that uh, uh, keeps from fire uh, firing up. Uh, they call it ultraviolet plating or something like that. And uh, does distribute the heat really well. And, you know, that thing is held up well. Oh my goodness, this worked really well. And so uh, uh, when I, you know, I got to talking about those products before this one, I'm going, what else did I have that I've really been happy with that's lasted? And, uh, you know, I've bought in some of those cheap little barbecues that you can buy for 21 bucks and you have to assemble them and, and they worked all right, but they eventually start falling apart and, and uh, the little shelf falls off all the time and stuff. And you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so we finally bought something that was a little more rugged. And we bought this at Camping World at the time, but you can get them at Amazon. So once again, I'm not pushing products, but I want to tell you about products that really stood out over time. And this Charbroil uh, Mini uh, Barbecue that we got has worked really well. It just uses the canister kind of... Uh, you could use the big canisters too. I mean, you have to get a special adapter. But uh, it's been a great barbecue. And so I, I'm going to put all three links of those particular products. If you haven't got one yet of the, any of these products, at least go look them, uh, look at them and see what we're talking about. Because uh, obviously this is a podcast. And see if it's a product that you'd like. And then, of course, if you buy it through our link, we get a, a kickback from it. And we appreciate that. Anyway, three really good products. <laughs> the Gerwin dehumidifier, the Eureka vacuum, and of course, uh, last but not least, the barbecue that we really love is the Charbro uh, barbecue, and I, I just call it my little Mack truck. It's a, it's heavy, you can tell it's built well, and you don't have to assemble it. <laughs> That's the important thing to me. I hate assembling stuff. So anyway, check them out. So yeah, uh, down below in the description, you'll find all three. Well, we're getting to the end of the show, and I uh, appreciate you guys listening to our show. And And it's really neat to find out that we have some really long-time uh, listeners, and, and we really don't take you for granted. We really appreciate it. And 
I know I keep saying this. I, I wish I was a better speaker and I wish I was like some of these really silver tongued folks, but I'm not. I'm just real. And now uh, we're real RVers out here with the same concerns that you have and the same problems and, and things that come up. And we like to uh, be open minded and hear other people's opinions. So we're not stuck in our beliefs and we're not going to argue with you. We're going to just we may not do what you uh, say you do, but we'd love to hear what you do out there as far as it being an RVer or, or wanting to be an RVer or how you're preparing to be an RVer. It's always nice. The other thing that was kind of fun is we had a chance to meet with some of our listeners and ask them about the new uh, Muppets we've been add adding to our videos and uh been getting a thumbs up on that we appreciate it uh, once again we kind of like to be a little different we don't want to be like all the other shows and uh so we're hoping that uh they're supposed to be it's an entertainment and so that's what we're uh doing they're fun to do they're actually harder to do like it's in the last show but uh um it it can take rving to another level as far as humor and fun and so that's kind of our goal with all that. So uh, we want to uh, thank everybody for listening. We're um, tickled pink that we have you and your, uh, uh, if you get a chance, download an app and try to uh, listening to the podcast on your cell phone if you get a chance. And we hope everybody's safe out there. And if you're not an RVer, I hope that we uh, make you smile and, uh, and get a chance to uh uh, contribute to our conversations we do appreciate it so with that in mind we ask everybody to be out there to be safe and if you're not an RVer get a chance buy yourself an RV you won't regret it I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio thank you so much and we'll talk to you next week on episode 80 can you believe it episode 80 coming up so have a great week bye now Thank you very much for listening to RV Talk Radio. Please take the time to listen to prior episodes. We love having you. Don't forget to subscribe.